aircraft. And as General McCaffrey was saying, as the U.S. shrinks its footprint, it becomes more and more dependent on the Taliban. Just a few weeks ago, the U.S. was bombing the Taliban. Now they have become security partners. That is not unprecedented in war, where an old enemy becomes a foe. This has happened extremely quickly, and it has happened with a foe that is very, very ideologically diverse, uh, a foe that claims to be different, a, a foe that now says it wants to open a new chapter of relations with the United States, an enemy that still denies that Osama bin Laden was responsible for 9-11, but now an enemy that, at least in the short term, was responsible for I mean, that still denies that Osama bin Laden was responsible for 9-11, denies that Osama bin Laden was responsible for I mean, that of relations with the United States, an enemy that still denies that Osama bin Laden was responsible for 9-11, but now an enemy that, at least in the short term, is cooperating closely with the United States through... A what have I told you all along? It wasn't bin Laden that masterminded and financed that. It was the Saudi Arabian government that done this and to this day they think that they have gotten away with this to this day they th still think that they can walk around and snigger and giggle and laugh pointing their finger saying ninety ninety boo boo you've got egg on your face ninety ninety boo boo after the death of those that died during the initial phase of nine eleven it's sad that we have allowed to be played, to be taken advantage of in this sort of way. And now it's still costing human lives. As General McCaffrey just said, a, a, a I'm sure, very, very taxed, very stressed out. Let's go on. The president's fixing to speak. He's supposed to be speaking here momentarily. They've had a bomb blow up that has killed does on behalf killed 12 United States uh, military members and according to the thing down on the bottom it has injured at least 15 on behalf of a grateful nation to these fallen Marines well I, obviously that is the primary thing he's got to say and he, he, in his own mind he understands that in the next five days uh, this dwindling U.S. military footprint in, in the Kabul airport is going to be an increasing danger. Uh, again, I would underscore something that seems obvious to most of us military experience, those who are urging the president to reverse course, to stay on the ground beyond uh, Tuesday night. You know, it's, if you grab the average lieutenant colonel at Na National Defense University and said, what a good idea. One brigade on the ground, Kabul airport, surrounded by mountains, 600 miles from the sea and the U.S. Navy, 7,000 miles from home, and your air power is 1,200 miles away. Is this a good idea? The answer is no, it isn't. So I think the, the president uh, has political detractors. There's room for those arguments about whether we should have stayed with 25,000 NATO troops or not. Those arguments are behind us. Now he's got to focus on the mission to extract U.S. presence remaining in, in Afghanistan. Richard Engel, I'm guessing you want in on this. Uh, uh, NBC News and MSNBC viewers saw you not long ago after the uh, abrupt closure of Bagram Air Force Base uh, riding a bicycle uh, down one of the aircraft ramps, down one of the taxiways. Uh, we left in the dark of night, pulled the power, pulled our men and women and as much of our equipment as we could fly out of there. We should also point out that while it limited our operations to the urban city center airport in Kabul and its one main runway, uh, Bagram, uh, for its vastness, for the fact that it was a defended perimeter, is what, uh, if memory serves, an hour and 15 minutes on a good day 
north of Kabul. So that would have been a further complicating factor for getting the people to this uh, air bridge we've witnessed over the past two weeks. Well, retaking Bagram at this stage is, is a non-starter. Uh, you would have to go back to war. You would have to reoccupy Afghanistan, send in a massive force, obviously break the relations that have just been formed with the Taliban, and, and potentially enter into years, if not more, uh, of conflict. Uh, the Taliban at this stage are cooperating fully, trying to extend the deadline, and I've spoken to Taliban commander. It must not be... Um cooperate and fully pertaining to making sure that stuff like this doesn't go on that ISIS just got to doing towards killing 12 of our United States military members and injuring over 15 they must not be doing too daggum good either that or they just don't care so don't say that they've been cooperating Whenever you have dead, bo dead American bodies over a rescue mission, this is basically what this is, is a rescue mission towards uh, getting all these people out of there. And now we've got 12 dead, 15 injured. Come on. Rationale the president pointed to for coming out of Afghanistan by August 31st was exactly what we saw happen this morning. You noted this has been a very, very real intelligence threat the administration has been tracking over the course of the last several days. The president. Frighteningly prescient warning from Secretary Blinken yesterday. Here's what he said. We're operating in a hostile environment in a city and country now controlled by the Taliban with the very real possibility of an ISIS-K attack. We're taking every precaution but this is very high risk. I was telling us yesterday that any contingency plans beyond the August 31st deadline were dependent upon the Taliban ensuring uh, safe passage. But of course, we now know that the Taliban was unable to stop today's attack. So not sure exactly where things stand in talks between the State Department and the Taliban on what will happen after Tuesday's deadline as for a diplomatic U.S. diplomatic presence remaining beyond Tuesday's deadline. No idea where that stands either. Brian? Griff Jenkins at the State Department. Griff, thank you. Well, here now with reaction is Ambassador Nathan Sales, former State Department coordinator for counterterrorism. Ambassador, thank you for being with us. I want to start with terrorism. Some interesting words from General McKenzie today. He says, and this is a reiteration, there's an extremely active threat stream against the airfield in Kabul. Interpret this for us. What does it mean in the days ahead? Well, Brian, I think it means that a terrorist group like ISIS that is capable of carrying out one attack like this is capable of carrying out two or three or more. And, and that's why I think it's incredibly important for the administration uh, to take back responsibility for security from the Taliban and handle it ourselves. We, we should never be outsourcing the security of American service members, uh, the lives of American service members to a terrorist group like the Taliban. Um, so President Biden said he had a plan and he was going to uh, change it if there were contingencies. Today is a contingency. It, it's time to adapt. We need to take back Bagram Air Base, which is much easier to secure, and we need to place responsibility for securing the perimeter in the hands of our brave service members rather than the Taliban. But Ambassador General McKenzie today doubled down on the idea of sharing intelligence with the Taliban, of relying on them for that outer level of security. What do we have to do differently here? Because it, it seems like the administration is moving exactly in the opposite direction of what you're suggesting right now. Well, I think the main mistake that is being made here is that we're trusting the Taliban. We're trusting that they have the goodwill uh, to protect our troops, and we're also trusting that they have the capability to do so. And as today's tragedy shows, that's clearly not the case. Uh, I, I think you know, this is the deadliest day for the American military in over a decade. Uh, let that sink in. Uh, 12 American Marines uh, and a Navy medic lost their lives today because the administration 
uh, has not done a strong job of planning and executing this evacuation. We should never be trying to get Americans out of harm's way on the good graces of the Taliban. We should never be trying to get Americans out of harm's way from an airfield that we don't control in the middle of a densely populated city. What we need to do is get back to Bagram Air Base, uh, a secure environment where we can make sure that the uh, uh, operations run smoothly and where we can secure the perimeter rather than trusting the Taliban. Ambassador, I think a lot of Americans are watching what happened today in Afghanistan, the loss of life, and the immediate thought is, in what form is that going to make its way here? What are your thoughts on what we're seeing in Afghanistan in terms of what it means on the home front? Well, Brian, the thing that really worries me is right now we have some really strong intelligence capabilities still with us in Afghanistan because we have a military presence and a diplomatic presence. That's how we knew that ISIS-K was planning uh, an attack of the sort we saw today. The minute the last C-17 goes wheels up, the minute we pull out our last soldier and our last diplomat, those intelligence capabilities go away. And so we're really going to be blind and deaf as we try to figure out what is the threat in Afghanistan. And we know when terrorist groups have safe haven and freedom to operate in a place like Afghanistan, they're going to start planning external operations. That's how we got 9-11. And it's incumbent upon the Biden administration to ensure uh, that another terrorist group in Afghanistan doesn't use that country to strike us at our homeland again. Ambassador, presumably we're going to hear from President Biden in just moments. In your view, what do we absolutely have to hear from him to have any hope that things could turn around in the days and weeks ahead? We need to hear humility. We need to hear from the president that mistakes were made by him and by his team, and he needs to have the courage to correct those mistakes. It is not too late. We can still protect our American citizens who are trying to get out of Afghanistan as long as we're willing to make the necessary adjustments. And that means don't trust the Taliban, do it ourselves, and let's relocate uh, to, to Bagram Air Base where we can securely control the environment. Ambassador, that sounds like a heavy lift of the will. We'll see if the president has the guts for it. Thank you for being with us today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Brian. Well, joining me now to discuss is Byron York, Washington Examiner, Chief Political Correspondent, and a Fox Business contributor. Byron, thanks for being with us. Obviously, the remarks coming from the president in just moments, presumably the biggest of his presidency so far. What do you expect to hear from him, and what do you think uh, he needs to say in order to give confidence to the folks on the ground in Afghanistan trying to sort this out? Well, I think what he needs to say is that he knows what to do next and tells the American people what to do next. Uh, but I personally do not believe he does know what to do next. I think the, the, the advice we just heard from the ambassador was very, very good. The fundamental problem with this entire debacle in Afghanistan is the, the United States is dependent on the good graces of the Taliban to accomplish this evacuation. And that is a crazy situation to be in. It was clear before today's terrible violence. It's just as clear right now. So the president needs to show the American people, I agree with the ambassador saying he should admit mistakes, but to show the American people he knows what to do next. Byron, uh, does the August uh, 31st deadline just go out the window today for good? Is that what we need to hear in these remarks? How do you think the president handles that? Well, the idea of, of holding to some agreement uh, with the Taliban, clearly there's been the grossest of violations of that agreement today. So, I, listen, I, I just don't think there's any deal. Uh, at all. And the question is going to be, and, and we'll have to get a better feel for public opinion on this, uh, do people want to see a more extensive American effort to get Afghan, Afghan allies out of Afghanistan, or do they want to see however many U.S. citizens there are in uh, left in Afghanistan, see them get out, and then U.S. forces get out, and that's it. Uh, after that point, uh, the United States, as the president has suggested, would maintain a counterterrorism presence covertly in the country. Uh, but other than that, out. Byron, a lot of people, and why there was significant efforts being made to accelerate 
uh, which we did see in recent days, the pace of evacuations from Afghanistan, uh, but obviously... To ISIS-K and to any other extremist organization on the ground in Afghanistan, we saw in the immediate aftermath of these blasts a slowed version of the evacuation, but we still know there are thousands of people on the airfield waiting to evacuate, and it's unclear if the Department of Defense will be able to come up with a reasonable plan to get people vetted through and onto the airport uh, area, and then ultimately to planes and to safety, because you still have this major, major problem. We heard General McKenzie talk about it earlier. These men and women, American troops, have to actually pat down individuals before they make it onto the runway because they don't want anyone getting onto one of these C-17 military planes with a bomb or with another weapon that could harm the, the service members on board or the other civilians. So they have to interact with these individuals very closely and you can vet anyone coming onto the airfield independently and look at their background and do all of the checks that you want. But at the end of the day, when they get to that airport and the entrances that we saw when we were there in Afghanistan over the weekend, they are at a new location. And those troops on the ground face new risks. And it's something that if the Biden administration plans to, to move forward with and continue evacuations up until the very last minute, that August 31st deadline, they will have to contend with. Trey, uh, Bill Hemmer, great work over there. Uh, the president's talked about this over the horizon capability. Uh, to go in and strike again in Afghanistan once the withdrawal is fully completed there. Uh, well, as of today, we've got a new enemy, and that's ISIS-K. So how far over the horizon will we be when it comes time to seek a strike against this group? Well, the difficult part about striking ISIS-K is that they are a splinter cell, an offshoot of the Islamic State. They started back in 2014 along with ISIS, and a lot of them are former members of the Taliban. But in some cases, it's just a few hundred fighters in different areas who can launch these type of uh, sleeper cell attacks against soft targets like the perimeter of an airport where you have thousands of civilians. So even if President Biden wanted to respond, he would have to find the exact location to respond to an ISIS-K cell, and it wouldn't be like we've seen in other uh, instances in the past when President Trump decided to strike Qatai Hezbollah in Iraq and Syria, for example, there were specific bases and areas to hit. President Biden will have a very difficult time finding these uh, these terrorists in the location where they are in eastern Afghanistan. One important thing to note, though, we heard this over and over again from the Biden administration, that if there were any attacks against American forces, that someone would be held responsible and there would be a very swift response. But we're looking at a situation now where, so far, officials in, in D.C. are saying that the Taliban did not know about this and they didn't understand that it was going to happen, but yet this massive, massive attack against U.S. forces outside of the Kabul airport taking place today and the people responsible for the security just outside that perimeter, the Taliban. Yeah, Trey, I have a question. It's Greg. Um, you know, the, the question is, who should be held responsible? So indirectly... The Taliban should be held responsible for allowing for ISIS to ever get that close towards planting a bomb like that. They should have had special security uh, perimeter set up to where they never could have got that close to the American personnel. Good luck to all of us is all I can say. Mr. Biden's fixing to speak probably in about an hour. I was hoping to be able to get it on this particular broadcast, but I'm not. Pray, to pray for our troops. Be thankful that we have men and women that are willing to put their lives in arms way simply to protect us for our freedoms. Pray for our troops. Pray for our country. And pray that our leaders will be able to know the right move, when to take it, when to make it, and that we as a Christian society can stand for and with our chief and commander in whatever that he is moved upon in his endeavors. Thank you. Good luck to all of us. And as we always say, God bless America. God bless our troops. And shalom.